What happens when a bunch of colonies federate and they don't have a capital? They design and build one, of course. I'm Russell, and welcome to the planned capital, Canberra. Evidence suggests that Aboriginal people inhabited the Canberra region for over 21,000 years. European settlers first arrived in the Canberra region in 1821, and they were called the Limestone Plains by the explorer Charles Thornsby. In 1901, the nation federated and the race was on to find a new capital. Both Sydney and Melbourne wanted the title, but unfortunately an agreement could not be reached, so they decided to compromise and meet in between the two. The colonies had to come together and become states, and there was a lot of rivalry between Sydney and Melbourne, which were the largest capitals of of the colonies and um, therefore if Sydney got it Melbourne would be upset and vice versa. So it was actually written into the Constitution that it couldn't be in either Sydney or Melbourne that they decided that it would be in New South Wales but it had to be at least a hundred miles out of Sydney. An international design competition was launched in May 1911 with 139 entries received. A year later, in May 1912, the Minister for Home Affairs, the Honourable King O'Malley, announced the winner to be... Walter Burley Griffin. Walter Burley Griffin. <laughs> it's Walter Burley Griffin. Walter didn't design the city by himself. He had the help of his wife, Marion Mahoney Griffin, who painted beautiful panoramic paintings of the capital, which helped the judging committee see what the built capital would look like. He had just married Marion, and she was an architect working in the same office. She was very sensitive, but... Uh, architect and sensitive to the landscape but more importantly she was a beautiful delineator she did the drawings in the office in Frank Lloyd Wright's office and again working with Walter so she and he through that period of putting together the competition entry collaborated hmm. not that she was uh, recognized at the time and it was just his name that went on to the entry but now we look at it and we say her drawings probably had quite an influence on how the, the jurors actually looked at the work. Griffin's design was unique in that it worked with the land instead of shaping the land around a plan, unlike most of his competitors. Griffin formed a land axis from Mount Ainsley down to Capitol Hill and also followed a water axis across the Malonglo floodplain. But the government had no, no plan to bring him over. Oh, right. right? And what they did was they took bits and pieces from different designs yep. and put together what we call the departmental plan. Yep. And that's how Canberra started to be built, oh, okay. to that plan. Well, the architects, the Institute of Architects, lobbied and they were very upset that the way, that you can't just take bits and pieces from various designs and put them together. So not only the architects but a whole lot of professional people started to lobby government. There was a change of government in 1913 and uh, as part of that change of government Griffin was invited to come over and talk to the departmental officers who created this yeah. composite map and um, see how they might be able to resolve things. As a result of that the minister at the time sacked the um, departmental board group <laughs> oh, wow. and appointed Griffin. Walter and Marion arrived in Australia in 1913 to oversee the construction of the capital as the department board had made many changes to the original design. And what Griffin, I mean the really selecting this site and selecting Griffin's design yeah. has enabled us to use this beautiful picturesque site yeah. and the water that comes from our catchment here and the soils and the deciduous plant material as well as our native plant material. Yeah. It's used, used all of those things to give us a beautiful city. Yeah. It's a city not like any other city. No. And that's the problem for the tourists and it's the problem for some of our ACT politicians. Yeah. They want people to see a city like other cities. Yeah. And if you don't know how to see a landscape, it just looks like a lot of trees. Yeah, definitely. So it's the bit about how how can people understand. Mm. And so things like um, 
views and vistas yeah. and the wow effect you get from that yeah. is a really important part of how we present Canberra. More than a century later, we look back at Griffin's original plan to find inspiration, with the first stage of light rail being completed in 2018. I hope that the people of today can build Canberra into a place of national pride for the people of tomorrow. I'm Russell and thank you so much for watching The Planned Capital. Mm -hmm.